Good evening. Looks, thank you, thank you. It looks like everyone found a spot. Um, welcome to the 2015 ACBSP Region 4 uh, Great Lakes Conference um, Annual Conference and Business Meeting. And it looks like obviously you all made it to Tiffin and we, we are so thrilled that you're here. Um, I'm Christina Collins. I am a, an assistant professor of business here at Tiffin University, so this is my, my home base. But I'm also um, privileged to be the president-elect of Region 4, um, representing the leadership team um, that coordinated the event and that has been um, contributing to the learning that we've all, in, all enjoyed over the past year. On behalf of Tiffin University, we're glad that you're here and we sincerely hope that you enjoy uh, this evening's activities and especially tomorrow where we'll have um, several opportunities for fellowship and learning and um, collaboration. We're here to enjoy that you have a little fun too, okay? So we have some music later on and then obviously the optional wine, wine tasting, which I'll remind you about at the end of the festivities. If some of you didn't know about that, come see me, we'll talk, I'll get you there, okay? I'd like to share a little bit about Tiffin University, since for most of you this may be your first time here. And a little bit about what you'll see on campus tomorrow. TU was established in 1888, and from its founding has focused on quality business education. At an early stage of our institution's history, our actual na the name of the institution was Tiffin Business University, and that was for around a 20-year period, according to our, our, again, long history. Today, TU has a student enrollment of over 4,200 students um, in both seated and um, online formats, graduate and um, undergraduate. As, and we also um, have a substantial international student population, primarily from Saudi Arabia and um, China and South America, so which we're very proud of that. And one of our premier um, locations is an MBA program in Bucharest, Romania. TU has held ACBSP accreditation since 1996. So we're, I feel like we're kind of the old school. Um, so we're on our 20th anniversary um, this year of ACBSP. We're currently undergoing our second. Thank you, yeah. Come on, TU, let's go. <laughs> we're pretty proud of that. Um, and so we're in our second reaccreditation um, cycle this year. And we thank really a lot of our um, ACBSP successes in great part to our esteemed colleague, Dr. John Miller, who is joining us tonight. Okay. Um, also, uh, um, logistically, our campus covers over 130 acres within the Tiffin City limits. All of the activities um, tomorrow will be actually on campus, so you'll get to see our beautiful surroundings. It looks like the weather is going to hold out for us. We have a beautiful fall day planned. We ordered that, so I'm glad it came through. Um, no rain, and I think you'll enjoy the facilities. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce the Region 4 leadership team, and those of you, um, please stand as I call your name, and I have us up here. Um, the president of Region 4 for this year, um, Christopher Rowe from DeVry University. I'll introduce myself again, Christina Collins, I'm president-elect of Region 4. Manoj Babu from T uh, Gateway Technical College in Racine, Wisconsin. And incidentally, the uh, Region 4 Conference will be at Gateway next year in Wisconsin, so we'll tell you a little bit more about that. Everyone there. Yes, he's taking names, right? Um, the Region 4 Treasurer is Dr. Uh, Marcy Jans from Indiana University East, and she is not with us. She is on sabbatical um, this uh, semester, and many of you know Marcy, um, and she's from Richmond, Indiana. Also past President Trina Lynch-Jackson from Ivy Tech Community College in South Bend, and I believe she's on her way. She'll be joining us either later this evening or definitely she'll be here tomorrow. And then our Chief Strategic Planning Officer, Dennis Brody from Sinclair Community College. The Great Lakes Council of uh, ACBSP represents colleges, colleges and universities in seven states. Illinois, Indiana, Minnesota, Michigan, Ohio, Wisconsin, and the Canadian province of Ontario. The mission of ACBSP is to establish and promote and recognize educational standards that contribute to the continuous improvement of business education through accreditation. And I think the tracks, um, the concurrent session tracks tomorrow 
greatly represent that. And the, the theme of the conference this year is creating new knowledge in the classroom. So we'll, we'll learn about that from each other tomorrow. Impressive um, statistic, at this conference we have over 30 institutions represented from all levels of faculty and administrators. So please give yourselves a hand, over 30 institutions are represented here. Um, we have a couple of special guests from uh, ACBSP joining us also. We're extremely honored um, to have uh, Jeff Alderman. He is the President CEO of ACBSP and he'll be saying a few additional comments and remarks at our opening session tomorrow, but he's joined us all the way from Kansas City. So Jeff, please, please stand up and be acknowledged. Also representing ACBSP, uh, the Board of Commissioners, is Dr. John Miller. John, thank you. And we're very honored to see John again. He retired from our faculty ranks last year, so we don't get to see he and his wife Joyce very often, so this is kind of a homecoming for us. And I would be remiss, and this is what I actually wrote Joyce. I said, accompanying John is his lovely wife Joyce, <laughs> who many of you know from the annual meetings and other events. <laughs> Joyce, you're welcome. And from Tiffin University, um, we have some other special guests that I'd like to recognize. Uh, we, have this, we have several School of Business faculty who took time off from their busy schedules um, to join us. So all School of Business faculty in the room, I didn't list you out name by name because it'd be, take forever to do that, right? If you wouldn't mind, just please standing being recognized as TU faculty. <laughs> So now you know who the faces are. If you have questions while you're on campus or about the institution, please please feel free to ask one of us. Um, and also, uh, our new dean of the School of Business, um, he started with us August 24th, Manish, was your first day, Dr. Manish Sharma. And then also, um, I'm going to invite to the podium with a few opening remarks our um, Vice President of Academic Affairs, Dr. Lillian Schumacher. Some of you, or I should say most of you probably know Lil um, from various ACB, ACBSP events. Um, she has been at Tiffany University since 2010, served in the role of the School of Business Dean, and now has uh, moved up to the Vice President of Academic Affairs. So she's going to provide the welcome um, in lieu of Dr. Charles, and I think she'll explain why, why he's not here. So, Lil, please. please, please. Good evening, everyone, and thank you, Christina. Um, yes, Dr. Charles uh, was not able to be with us this evening. Um, he has something he has done to his ankle. I'm not sure I didn't ask for a lot of details, but he's not walking very um, accurately or straight right now, and he's on crutches, and so I decided to pinch hit for him. So happy to do so, actually. Um, ACBSP is always near and dear to my heart, and um, the one, well, I guess I was gonna say maybe there are a few more downsides than just one of being a vice president for academic affairs, but um, most days there are not. But I really miss the interaction with my ACBSP colleagues, and so it's really, um, I'm very, very honored to be here to welcome all of you to campus. I've gotta tell you when a couple of the business faculty a couple years ago um, had this grandiose idea to host the Region 4 conference, yes, ladies, you know who you are, I thought they were crazy knowing that we were having a self-study this year um, and some other changes that we had going on. But I just really want to thank them and recognize everybody in this room that helped make this event happen um, because I think they did a really, really good job. So let's please give, and I want to know who you all are. I know they're Kelly McGilvery, Christina, obviously, Collins, um, Wendy, Zeems, who else? Teresa, come on, stand up, don't be shy. All right, because this took a lot of people to organize. Go for it, stand up, gentlemen. Thank you. Lori Distel. Of course, Lori Distel. Yes, thank you all very, very, very much. 
Um, so welcome, and I hope you enjoy this evening. Uh, this Camden Falls is, a, is one of our partners, and we do a lot of events uh, here at this uh, entity, and I hope you take advantage of the wine tasting. Uh, Ralph's Joy of Living is a, is a homegrown organization here in the community, and they have a great uh, selection of beers, wines, coffees, all sorts of, of nice treats, and so I hope you take advantage of that. And then, of course, I know you look forward to tomorrow and all the presentations that you'll be part of tomorrow. So we're very happy to have you here. Welcome to Tiffin and um, enjoy the ACBSB Region 4 Conference. Thank you. Okay, at this time, we will um, start serving dinner. I think you have your salads in front of you. Um, we will start the buffet line in about 10 minutes, five or 10 minutes, so feel free to enjoy your salad. Um, after uh, we are all settled after dinner, we will have our keynote speaker, um, Lynn Child, who will um, has a wonderful presentation ready for us, and then we will have some entertainment from our Tiffin University uh, Department of Music, so please enjoy. At this time, as we're finishing up dinner and you're getting your coffee, I'd like to introduce, and we're so honored, uh, to have our featured keynote speaker tonight, um, Lynn Child. Lynn is an accomplished entrepreneur, speaker, and philanthropist from Northwest Ohio. And she also happens to be an alum of Tiffin University. I'm a dragon. Yeah. Yes, she's a dragon. Yes, we love that. <laughs> Her catapult into the information technology industry is driven by her love for technology and the people who are impacted by it. For over a decade, she has been a driving force behind the technology company Centricom, focused on networking, security, and data management, and also Aardvark, focused on web and application development. Today, Ms. Child continues to be a trusted IT advisor in boardrooms and public forums throughout the world. So we're, we're more than thrilled to welcome her home, welcome her back to Tiffin, and she has an incredible presentation for us. So I'll turn it over to Lynn. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. I am incredibly excited to be here with all of you. Having been a drag in previous years, it's always fun to come back, and it's always fun to share. And I will let you know, maybe a little other piece of information is, I actually was a professor for 10 years before I went into business. So I understand what it's like to be in your shoes and work with students. I also understand the importance of uh, accreditation and those aspects. What I hope to share with you tonight is some information about where the world is going. So you can kind of open up your minds and open up your imagination. My theme, of course, because of my companies and having to do with security, it'll be wrapped around the idea of security. But I'd also like you to kind of go on an imaginary journey with me about where the world is going. And it's pretty exciting. Um, it can be a little scary, too, because of the security aspects of it. But it's going to impact you and your programs and all of your students as you go into the future. So let's begin and um, I'll begin sharing information and I, hopefully all of the technology will work the way we want it to, right? We all hope that when we're in front of a group of people, right? Okay. Well, basically, this is me. Um, thank you, Christina, for a lovely introduction. I just wanted to mention uh, that uh, when I do speak to groups such as yours, um, I do with a little bit of authority from the standpoint that my one company, Centricom, we do manage internet security. And my largest client is a Fortune 50, uh, which means that it has an international presence and is in the medical field. I have Fortune 100, Fortune 200 uh, organizations that we serve globally as well. My other company is web and application development, much smaller, but uh, I do see uh, security needs and the way the world is going in a very particular way because of my two businesses. And also, I'm betting the future on what I'm sharing with you tonight because I'm putting my dollars and my uh, talents and expertise and all my great team that I have uh, behind some of the things I'm going to share with you. And I firmly believe, hopefully, as we go through the presentation, you get a feel for some of the things that maybe as faculty, you'll be thinking about for your programs as well. 
As we start into this presentation, I'm going to be talking about security in a connected world. Folks also use connected society, connected world. Uh, sometimes you're going to hear terms called Internet of Things, IoT, Internet of Things. Uh, you will hear uh, network society, lots of different terms like that. Many times they're used to mean the same sort of thing. Now, this slide, I'm not like, with, you, with your students, I'm not going to go through every item. I'm, it's here mostly so that you can see the point that technology has changed tremendously over the years. And I guess the question I would ask you, when you first start your career, now this starts the imagination part, can you go back and remember what was it like and what were the tools you were using when you first started your career in education and higher ed? And now, think about the things and the tools you're using now. Smartphones, tablets, think how much that's changed over the years, tremendously. And that's basically what this slide uh, depicts, is the fact that now it's changed so much that we're even all connected wirelessly, and it's going to be even more as we go forward. Now, because we have smarter devices, that smartphone that you carry around has more power in it than a huge mainframe computer from 30 years ago. And that's amazing. And we carry that around every day and we take it for granted because it's just there. We expect it to work, it gives us lots of power, we can do so many things, but if you really think back to the way it was and what we have now, it's only, we're only going to get more and more connected as society evolves. We're going to talk about that. So, my presentation tonight talks about not only the business world, but also it applies to your home life as well, and keeping yourself safe at home as well as in your businesses. No matter where you go, whether you're traveling to Mongolia, <laughs> which Christina and I were just talking about, or whether you're, you're in your own backyard at Tiffin University. It's important to understand and understand where technology is going. All of you are probably very familiar, can you say okay, uh, with these kinds of technologies. Basically, you have your wireless camera, you have a NIST uh, thermostat, that it's wireless, you can go online and check your house and check the connections and make sure that your furnace is working, all those sorts of things. It's also going to be uh, making us and helping us work smarter. We were just talking about that. You've got your smartphone. It's connected by Wi-Fi. You can do video conferencing with multiple people all around the world or somebody just down the street if you so true, choose. And then on the right-hand side, I want you to notice what's on the right-hand side. That is a dashboard from salesforce.com. From a business standpoint, and all of you being in the business world, you're going to see so many of these kinds of dashboards going forward. So that's going to be something that you're going to want to understand and learn about. Because what's driving that dashboard? It's all kinds of business information that's brought up into a, a, a screen called a dashboard that allows folks to make business decisions uh, in real time. And what's Driving that are all kinds of data logs from all these devices that are going to be connected. Stay tuned, there's more to come. Technology is also changing society. This is an electric car. Imagine what it's going to be like when we have electric cars and we don't have to necessarily stop at a gas station. And the way they're working on these electric cars now, they'll go for a very long distance without having to have a charge. So again, this is just an example of the way that technology is going to be and has been changing our society. This is one I absolutely love. Does anyone really know what this is? When I first saw it and I started doing research a few years ago, I wasn't sure what it was. It was just a prototype. Basically what it is, it's, a, it's like a plane, but it allows um, folks to be able to con be connected. It's part of the wireless system. It, uh, it's part of the GPS system. It allows us to be in one place and then be able to find <coughs> locations no matter where we are around the world. And there are going to be lots of these kinds of planes uh, in the atmosphere atmosphere helping us be connected. Now, I'm going to stop for a few minutes on this particular slide. This particular slide is really important. 
And it's just one slide, I have another one after this, that I want to draw to your attention because it will affect your thinking as you start you're working on your curriculum and you start thinking about where the world is going. Again, devices are going to be connected. All kinds of devices. I don't care whether it's your refrigerator or a rail car or a car, it doesn't matter. They're all eventually going to have the ability to be connected via wireless. They're all going to be throwing off logs. All that data is, is aggregated into a location and then it's analyzed so that business people can make decisions. And it doesn't matter whether you're in HR or you're in marketing or you're in IT. It doesn't matter. It can be any area of your organization. And this is what's going to happen. So let's take a minute and look at this. This is an example of a mundane thing that is a rail car. Okay? And if you notice what we have over here, we have a wireless system and we have GPS. Right here, what's happening, and this is happening today, right now. This is going on with CSX and Norfolk Southern, those fo folks. Um, this is a closed door detection. This is temperature. And this is really important if you have a car that's refrigerated. This vibrations and impact. This is freight condition monitoring. This is diagnosis, diagnostic, so it knows what's going on. This is brake monitoring. Let me paint a picture and imagine. This could also be a passenger car. What they're doing is they're listening and they're monitoring. So say for example, they hear something that doesn't sound right or there's a vibration that's not right. They can immediately alert the engineer to stop the train and avoid a really impactful accident. That's what's happening. That's where our world is going. This is just one example. As I said, doesn't matter whether it is a rail car or whether it's your refrigerator or whether it's an automobile that's what's going to happen and you're going to have all these logs that are going out creating data and then people are going to aggregate that information and then be able to make business decisions because of it. Uh, this is not in my presentation, but I was just reading. Um, I have um, references at the end of this presentation, and there's a report called the Horizon Report, 2015 for higher ed. One of the things I was reading about is a wearable. How many of you have heard of a wearable? A few of you have. Let's paint a picture of what that would be like. A wearable would be something that you have on your body. It could be a pair of slacks, it could be a shirt, it could be a bracelet. And what happens is it's doing the same sort of monitoring. It's monitoring your pulse. It's monitoring your heart. It's monitoring respiration. So if you or a loved one or a colleague had had a heart attack or you have somebody that has diabetes and you're constantly being monitored and all of a sudden something's different and an alert goes to your doctor and the doctor or the nurse or whoever contacts you and say, are you doing something that's unusual? If you aren't, and your rates are up, they will tell you to immediately go to the emergency room. That's a wearable. You're going to hear about that. That's just starting now. Those are the kinds of things that we're going to be able to do. Another example like this. Now let me show you so you understand these data logs that are being sent. There, people cannot fathom all the logs. So what picks up is in dashboards, I'm going to show you one. It picks up the anomalies. It picks up the things that are different and sends the alert. Now, this is an example of the kind of dashboard. This is proflowersretail.com. In real time, they have people sitting at a monitor watching who's buying what worldwide. Now, when you are looking at this, they can make adjustments. They can adjust prices in real time. If they say, see that more is sell, uh, selling out in San Francisco than it is in New York City, they can automatically make some price adjustments. They can send targeted emails to folks to buy certain things at certain times. So what I'm suggesting to you is, you as business faculty and deans, start thinking about how you want to begin preparing your students for this kind of world because it's out there now. Pro Flowers is doing this right now. CSX is doing what I just shared with you today right now. But the good news, we're just at the beginning of that. 
some of the big companies are doing this but it really hasn't filtered down a lot and so you're at the beginning and you can start thinking about what the world's going to look like and how that's going to affect your curriculum looking at this this you're also going to hear about big data analytics that's what this is it's analyzing the logs that are coming in and being able to put them in dashboards so people in real time can make business decisions and therefore grow their companies keep people employed and continue to grow as as an organization now I've been talking about the Internet of Things and devices it's a little hard to see, but at the top, you'll see, oh, I can read, South Korea has, it's 37.9 per 100 devices connected today. United States is fourth on that list at 30, 30 uh, oh, I'm sorry, 24.9. But I'm serious about where this is going. By the year 2020, and that's not that far away, we are going to have over 75 billion devices. So anything you touch in your life has the possibility and capability of potentially having some sort of a wireless connection that is feeding information somewhere. Okay? So that's painting the picture. Now, it is going to affect across the globe our society and economics. And the references for some of these things are in, uh, in the presentation that you have access to after this presentation. I can't really go into many of the slides that are here. I've taken them from a variety of different presentations to try to give you an overview because you could spend a whole hour presentation on so much of this. I wanted to give you a taste though of where it's heading. So everybody got their imagination going? Okay, now think about what happens all this wonderful data we have situations where attackers and hackers are constantly trying to break in we've got China we've got Russia we've got Pakistan we've got folks in Afghanistan what they're trying to do is break into our networks and they're trying to steal the data rather than build something themselves they're trying to steal the data this is just a little history and again it's in the PowerPoint presentation I'm not going to go and read everything for you but this shows you how much it's changed between, between 1963 and does that anybody here remember Kevin Mitnick he was the first really well-known hacker and he stole 20,000 credit cards and really put e-commerce a little bit behind the scenes because he was able to do that and scared everyone and last year 2014 it was the year of the breach so many companies were hacked into that boards of directors became aware of this situation and now resources are being put towards how to protect their companies and how to protect their employees now there are risks because of these hackers and these attackers and I'm giving you some examples of some of those. Parents had baby monitors. Remember reading about that? Mm -hmm. Hackers got in and were watching what was going on in the nursery. That was frightening. They also got into thermostats in people's homes and started doing things and changing things. Anybody remember reading about how the Jeep was taken over? literally taken over driving 60 miles an hour and it stopped in the middle of a major highway it also was pushed remotely via wirelessly off into the berm out of traffic as well it literally locked the vehicle up and they did that all remotely so when you're out there buying different devices, appliances, and different things, make sure you ask about security components. Please, please, please. Business and home, any devices you buy now, make sure they have the proper protocol for security. This is another one. This will get everyone's attention because now people are being fired. And not only employees, but also C-level. Chief Information Officer, CEO, they're losing their jobs. So, what can you do? What can you do as business faculty and, and uh, business deans? What does the future hold for all of you? And how is this going to affect you? 
and your curriculum and your university or college? Well, one of the first things to be aware of, and this is probably, I only put two slides in here about this because as I said, this information, I, I could do a whole day's presentation on some of this, but this is probably the one that's the most prevalent, that frightens businesses and you, should frighten you in your home the most. It's when hackers and attackers send you email, you click on a link, or you get a text message with a link, and you click on it, and it sends you someplace you think you're going legitimately, but you're not, and they're putting different kinds of programs on your system so that they can attack you or gather information and you don't even know they're there. And that's called fear phishing and that's part of what they call social engineering. One of, what are some of those things that they can put on your computer? It's called malware and I'm sure most of you have experienced this. There are different kinds but three of the pre <coughs> uh, prevalent kinds are spyware where they actually load programs on your computer and they're watching you through your camera. Um, adware is when you get those nasty pop-ups and you can't get rid of them. But this one, has anyone ever been, been had their computer at business or at home locked down? It happened My to you. My husband's business computer. Your husband's, and what did he have to do? Share with folks, what did he have to do? He, he was either gonna have to pay, I think it was hundreds of dollars to get back his data. Then he took it to three different computer experts and they, could, and they could not could not work around. Mm -hmm. And that is absolutely true. There are these kinds of stories happening all the time. Again, going back to you, back to your students, helping them understand some of this, you understanding this, sharing this with faculty, friends, your, your youngsters, your grandchildren. It's important that folks understand. You have to be exceedingly careful with anything that you would go ahead and have a link and that you click on it. Question, please. Well, I was going to ask what, what your opinion is when someone gets a authenticated certificate and you can't tell if they're bad or not because they're using a real certificate. Well, and you're, you're talking about then clicking on a link? No, if you can have an authenticated certificate yes. that says that you're a trusted source. You, and, yeah. and so you download the software from a trusted source, okay. but I, it's not really trusted. It's a stolen certificate. That's coming up, but I'll give you a quick answer right now. The best thing to do is to always go to the source. Don't click on anything in email. Don't click on anything in text messages. Don't click on things in Facebook. Social media is rampant with this. What you will do is if you want something or you download something, go actually to the source. For example, Adobe or Microsoft Office. Instead of clicking on a link, literally go to the Microsoft.com site. Literally go to the Adobe.com and download from there. That's the best advice I can tell you because you're right. They've become so sophisticated. They will create something that looks like it's trusted and it's not trusted. Good question. And thank you for sharing that. I wanted to say one other thing. Sure. My husband had, this was his business computer, he had all of the Nortons or whatever the normal security protections were, the computer experts could not tell him how they got in, what, and they think it was from Russia. It was not, it was not someone in this country. Yeah. And that's very typical. So you need to be very careful because she's right. They will shut down your computer. They will ask for a ransom if it's a business. We're not talking 100 or 200 or 500 dollars. We're talking thousands and thousands of dollars. And there's no way to know whether they're really going to unlock it. And there's no way to know if they do, if they won't come back and do it again. So um, back up, back up, back up. Please, back up constantly, because that's your best defense. Mm -hmm. Please, go ahead. And then so far, you know, you've told us that user beware. Right? User beware. So the next responsibility of the business is to make sure that the users are protected. Correct. It, it is the responsibility of businesses to make sure that their users are protected. So what and are they doing about it? Well, and, and, well, that's just a little further on too, but that's okay. I'll address it. Um, many organizations are putting in uh, and putting, having their um, employees go through online security training, and I'll share a little bit of that coming up, so you know it. Yes, that's a very good question, and they are responsible because otherwise they can be penalized. Now the FTC was just given the authority to not only uh, uh, companies can be sued, people can lose jobs. Now the FTC can levy fines which they, and that's brand new, that just happened this summer. So the folks have 
the attention of the board of directors in organizations because they can lose their job, they can lose thousands of dollars, it can be such so severe that they can lose their businesses actually. That, that is happening. So again, um, you can protect yourself. I'm not here for doom and gloom. If I was, I wouldn't be in business. There are folks out there that can help you. Now, I'm, this is not commercial, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying there are things that can happen. I have a few of those tips coming up and I'll share those with you, okay? Um, and thank you for sharing about the ransomware. It is real, I mean, it is absolutely real. This is a, a, a site that I'd like all of you to remember. It's called Information is Beautiful. It is a wonderful site if you wanna go out and you want to figure out any kind of um, uh, trend lines or anything having to do with any subject that you can think of. What I did here in the search, I put in IT breaches. And then what came up were all of these breaches that have happened in the, just, whoops, I'm sorry. Whoop, whoa, I'm going. Oh, wow, 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 how do I go back? There you go. Ah, I'm getting it. You're seeing a preview. There, we go. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, these are breaches that just happen. When you go to this site, it's a wonderful tool for your classroom because I've used it before when I do other presentations. This particular one, as I said, I just put in the search function, IT breaches, and it brought up all the information about the most recent breaches. Breaches, And as you scroll down, as you can see, it, um, as, as you would be able to scroll down, this is a, a static image, but it goes down through 2014, 2013, and then if you click on each of the uh, bubbles, it, can, it pulls up another bubble with more information and a link to the actual report. So I'm just sharing this as an example because these are the kinds of breaches that are happening. These are the kind of breaches that are going on in organizations, but it's a beautiful site to use for lots of other aspects. And notice also, right here, there's a, if you wanted to just find out the breaches that occurred in um, academia, right here under all, at the top up there, oops, let me see if I can get that to work. Yeah, right there is academic. If I just clicked on academic, it would just bring up all the breaches that were <coughs> academic. So, information is beautiful. I think you'll like that site. It's a wonderful resource for you as you're working on your curriculum as well. Okay, you wanted to know about online security tips. I'm gonna share some with you. And again, this slide, I usually do a morning presentation about these things and then I show folks all the different things that you, know, you can find online. I, I show exactly how you, uh, some examples of emails that came through or text messages. But real briefly and quickly, because this will help all of you, these are six online security tips. And again, you are your best defense. Your, your best defense for your family, you're the best defense for, for whichever university or college you're at. Think before you click on something. And I don't care where it is. Make sure it's from a trusted source. I will give you an example. I received an email from a very, very dear friend just recently. And I automatically would click on it right away because I just know her. And it, and, and, but I looked at it and I thought, this is a bit strange. It doesn't look quite right. So what I did was I forwarded it to her. And I said, did you mean to send this to me? And she wrote back right away and said, no. So I knew immediately to delete it out of my system. I also wrote her back then immediately and said that your address book has been compromised and someone's sending emails to all your friends. Make sure you let them know right away that this email isn't from you, otherwise you're, they're gonna get infected as well. So be very careful. Go to authorized marketplace for downloads. We just talked about going to Microsoft, go to Adobe, go to the source. Don't click on anything. Uh, especially when it comes in as a text message on your phone. Folks have the false um, impression that text messages and phones are safe. They also have the uh, false impression that Apple is not as dangerous as um, droids or whatever. That's no longer true. It was at one point in time because the bad guys went after the biggest market. So if they're gonna put their time, energy, and effort into it, they were gonna go after the big market. But now, that's not true. We have folks that are focused on going after Apple as well. Uh, update patch software upon your devices. How many of you don't update when you see this little notice says you should update? Please, 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 because what happens when you get those updates, they, they are, the companies are tracking the bad guys and they're putting in patches. And so if you keep that updated, your computer's more likely not to get hacked, not to possibly have ransomware or something else happen to it. 
practice password management. How many of you change your passwords at least once a quarter? I see no hands. <laughs> How many of you use trusted passwords which have symbols, numbers, uppercase, lowercase? Okay, I've got a few more hands there. Please, please, please don't use your dog's name, your kid's name, your birthday, any of that sort of thing. Make it trusted uh, and change it every three months. I know it's a pain, but what I do is I try to use a heuristic like um, uh, Something that I'm going to remember, like um, I don't eat donuts, and then I might say I and use the letter eight, and then D O, and I'll change something in there, but I'll remember it because I used a heuristic like that. So oftentimes, folks argue with me when I say they need to do that, and I none of you raised your hand, so I know <laughs> you need to be thinking about that. But if you can come up with something like that and have four or five and rotate them, and then every year rotate different ones, that will help you. Another item, create separate email accounts. It's so easy to do that now. You can set, uh, set up extra, uh, um, um, extra Gmail or Hotmail accounts. What I do is I have four different accounts. I have two, one for each of my businesses, and then I have one for my family, and then I have one for all my online purchasing. So if I would ever be hacked, if something would happen, I would immediately know what I needed to do, to do and which one I would go to. Heaven forbid, it's never happened in any of my businesses. I'm not anticipating that since I'm a security company, but you know, if somebody really, 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 really wants to get it, eventually they're gonna figure a way. But if you have extra accounts and you do your online ordering through those other accounts, that way, if you have to shut it down, you don't lose all your personal contacts. You don't lose everything else. So please, if you don't have a separate account that you're doing for online ordering and uh, web and different e-newsletters and things you want to get, consider setting something like that up. Uh, back to your question. Uh, online security training, companies are paying good dollars very wisely for online security training. And how it works is, and Kevin Dittnick, remember I told you about him being so bad? He now is involved with the company that actually offers this kind of training. And how it works is, they come in, work with the IT department, and what they do is, they send out an email, and they don't tell anybody it's coming. And then what they do is they see how many people click on it, and they come up with this, what is called a phishing score. P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G score. And then they put folks through training once they have that score, and then they take and do the training and they do the uh, uh, emails again and see if they've improved. And what happens when they do the initial phishing test, they take it to their board and they get money to get it done. Because usually there's somewhere between a 20 and 30% number of folks in organizations, depending on the size, that actually click on something they shouldn't. And that could have compromised the network because that's the weakest link in any organization is uh, are the internal employees. So basically, if it feels wrong, it is wrong. So if your gut's telling you something doesn't seem right, forward that email to someone and ask them. Don't just click on it. Check out, go to the places where you can download something directly. It's important that you look at it from that standpoint. Now, a challenge to each and every one of you in this room. Your imagination should be running, thinking about all these devices connected. Everything from railroad cars to wearables, to refrigerators, to dishwashers, to cars. Your students and you are going to have to deal with this world. We're at the beginnings of this world. You're going to hear about connected society. You're going to hear about the Internet of Things. It's coming. So if you start thinking about it now and start preparing now, you'll be ready. So this is the challenge. I would suggest that you want to continue now that you're aware, and many of you may have already been somewhat aware, continue to read and research. Online has wonderful, wonderful resource, resources, as you well know. Utilize case studies so folks can understand. There are wonderful case studies out there regarding the network society in the Internet of Things. Practice simulations. I think the folks in the back um, do simulations. Now, I don't know if they're going to go this route, but the, the company in the back, I was reading about some of their simulations. Seek out industry speakers and experts to come into your classrooms or to speak at different conferences you attend. 
and attend relevant events and different conferences so that you can continue to learn more as you are preparing your curriculum and your students. And we all know sometimes our students, because many of them come to us after they're already out and they're seeking degrees, and even the young students, we need to learn from them and not be afraid to learn from them. And I know all of you do that and you grasp that. It's important that we do that. So with the idea of attending webinars and seminars and things, I'd like to share with you an event that's going to be happening next week. This is the Internet of Things. It's going to be held in Finley. It's next Wednesday. It's an all-day event at Weinbrenner Seminary. Um, the information is um, on the presentation. You'll have access to it. I'm not expecting all of you to all of a sudden drop everything and attend something like this, but I just wanted to say that there are also local resources that you can attend and you can learn about what's going on. The, the goal of this particular group is to help folks just like you understand where the world is going so they can uh, start preparing. We have a speaker there from Whirlpool. They're going to bring a dishwasher on stage. They're literally going to have it wireless and they're going to be able to show how they send logs back to uh, Whirlpool so that they know if there's something wrong with the dishwasher, if the dishwasher needs um, uh, some new part, if the dishwasher isn't sounding right. Um, it, it, it's amazing. We have a healthcare person that's going to be there talking about some things, and uh, there's also going to be a person that's going to be talking about the car and the car that stopped and what that means and how you have to learn to trust and what you need to do to protect yourself. So this should be an interesting event for those of you that might be interested. It also was put on YouTube after the fact, so you can check it out. And previous years, this is our 14th annual, previous years are also uh, online. Last year we did one on big data. And this is the forum, this is the agenda, some of the topics that we'll be talking about. And again, going back to the idea of big data analytics, that's being driven by the Internet of Things and a networked society. You're going to see lots and lots and lots of that. So you'll be reading and preparing your students for that. So that's the information about the forum, just so that you know if you would be interested. I think, uh, Christina, you said some of the students from Tiffin may be attending next week. Right. That would be wonderful. And of course, anybody else would be more than welcome to attend. These are the different resources and references that I used today, plus some extra ones that I threw in there. For example, the Horizon Report for Higher Ed about the trends in 2015 in emerging technologies. Um, there's also information there regarding the, the Jeep, uh, <laughs> spear fishing, malware. I tried to include all the different aspects that I felt would be important. There's also a couple links in there regarding cybersecurity frameworks. For those of you that are in business, this is going to be a very important aspect. Didn't have time to get into that today, but that's what the boards are going to be looking at, and that's what many of your students will be involved in when they're hired by organizations. It doesn't matter whether it's a for-profit or non-profit, there's going to be a lot of emphasis on security because of the Internet of Things, because of connected society. So as I close, I have a minute or two, and I just wanted to say thank you. I feel blessed to have been invited. I hope I gave you some things to be thinking about, and I will be here, and I will also be at the wine tasting if anyone has any additional questions. And honestly, this is the direction the world's going. And, and so I want to take it from my heart to your heart to say, start looking at it now, use some of the resources, go online, and just keep looking at what it means to be in the world of, of connectedness and in the world of the Internet of Things. So thank you very much. I am honored. Thanks.